are here with us today on November 30th. Last day of November, guys. Here it is. And it is snowing outside right now to beat the band. Uh, Bonnie said, blizzard. And there isn't even any snow on the uh, on the forecast uh, right now. I, I, I haven't looked at the radar to see what the radar says. Um, but we weren't supposed to get snow, and it's coming down significantly. Which, you know what, that's okay. It's it's that time of year. It's it's winter. We're supposed to have snow. Um, much as I dislike snow. Just, it's fascinating to watch, you know. Not as fascinating as when you're driving in a car and it looks like you're in some kind of an ion storm or something. But um, So good morning. Glad you're here with us on this Wednesday. The uh, first Wednesday in Advent. Midweek services tonight at uh, St. Paul here in Irma. We're going to be talking this uh, this Advent season about Jesus, our prophet, priest, king, and savior. Uh, so one of those each each Wednesday evening. The services are also Thursday up at Faith at 4.30, 7 o'clock here at Irma on Wednesday evenings, 4.30 in the afternoon up at Faith on Thursdays. So um, for those in the area, if you're looking for uh, a Wednesday night service or a midweek service for Advent, there you go. All right. Um, we have a uh, commemoration today, St. Andrew. Um, St. Andrew's Day also marks the uh, uh, where Advent begins. The Sunday closest to St. Andrew's Day is the first Sunday in Advent. Um, and so our Advent is a little earlier this year because uh, the last Sunday in November was closer to Wednesday, then the first Sunday in December. Um, and so we get uh, all four. Um, and, you know, Advent is usually four Sundays, um, but it can fall in a funny way where sometimes churches will only have three Sundays, like, like this year where the first Sunday in Advent is actually November 1st, 22nd, or in November. And a, a lot of people says... Um, a lot of a lot of people says, "Did I say that? That was awful." A lot of people will, a lot of churches will choose to forego that first of the four Sundays and just have three Sundays in Advent, which I, it, or it, it, at least forego f having four midweek services and just have three midweek services. But I, four is four. Four is four, and Lutherans are kind of, kind of. It's kind of important that word is is kind of important in the in the theology of the Lutheran Church. Let those who have ears hear. All right, anyway, so today, St. Andrew the Apostle is commemorated. Um, St. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. All right, so the brother of, of, uh, of Simon, of Peter, Simon Peter, born in the Galilean village of Beth Bethsaida. Originally a disciple of St. John the Baptist. Um, and in fact, the third Sunday in Advent is when, I believe, when John sends his disciples to Jesus. And that's when, when Andrew would go to and, and finally see uh, Jesus. Um, so uh, originally a, 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 a disciple of St. John, John the Baptist. Um, Andrew <clears throat> then became Jesus's, the first of Jesus' disciples. Now, that's in the Gospel according to St. John. Um, I think in uh, Luke he calls Peter first. Um, but either way, he's one of the first four the, for certain. Um, and I guess, we, I guess church tradition would say that he's the first. His name regularly appears in the Gospels near the top of the lists of the twelve. Um, it was he who first introduced his brother Simon to Jesus. Now... See, and, and in the Gospel of Luke, or is it in Matthew, Jesus' first encounter with Simon Peter is when he steps into his boat and asks him to push out from shore so he can continue preaching. Um, but but what, what the author here is doing is focusing on John's Gospel. Uh, so anyway, uh, first introduced to his brother, first introduced his brother Simon to Jesus, John chapter 1. 41 and 42. He, he was, in a real sense, the first home missionary as well as the first foreign missionary. Uh, that's in John chapter 12. 
Tradition says Andrew was martyred by crucifixion on a cross in the form of an axe, right? So not, not like this, but like this. Um, just as Peter refused to be crucified in the same way the Lord was and asked for his cross to be inverted. In AD 357, his body is said to have been taken to the Church of the Holy Apostles in Constantinople and later removed to the Cathedral, cathedral of Amalfi in Italy. Centuries later, Andrew became the patron saint of Scotland. St. Andrew's Day determines the beginning of the Western Church year, since the first Sunday in Advent is always the Sunday nearest to St. Andrew's Day. Uh, hmm, I should look at that, because the, we're the Western Church, okay? Um, Rome, the Americas, this, this uh, Western Church, uh, as opposed to the Eastern Church, or the Greek, Greek Orthodox Church, or the, the Orthodox Churches are considered the Eastern Church. And they do pick some of the uh, days differently. Apparently, there's something with Advent. Also, um, uh, is it Easter? No, not Easter. Um, hmm, my brain is skipping points. There's another holiday that we celebrate always on a Sunday. Oh, maybe it is Easter. Maybe it is Easter because they, they, uh, uh, because they don't, yeah, I think it's Easter. They celebrate Easter on the day that it occurs because they don't, we, we move stuff so that it's on a Sunday. I, I think they stick with the Jewish calendar, the days of the Jewish calendar and keep it on. Well, we'll talk about that when we get to Easter. Anyway, today's St. Andrew Day, and you can tell I don't have anything going on uh, immediately following uh, our stuff today because I'm yam I'm yammering. <laughs> All right. Well, good morning. Let's see who's let's see who's joined us here today. Um, Jerry, good morning. Breezy, huh? Yeah. Just wait. You might get some cold and snow. We'll send it over to you. We, we don't need to keep all of it. Ashley, good morning. Jill and John, good morning to you guys. Kathy, good morning. Cold and windy in Chicago. Well, that's Chicago, right? Uh, Debbie, good morning to you and Grant and Ann. Mushtak, good evening. Neely, good morning, brother. Good to see you. You said you were watching some of these. Um, da -da 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 -da. It bumped on me here. Uh, Linda, good morning. Four weeks and then we'll be... <laughs> you guys are headed to Florida. Huh? Well, good morning to you and Keith. And uh, Yeah, got to get through Christmas. Spend Christmas with the, with the kids and the grandkids. Jeannie, good morning to you and Bob. Uh, Kindle says no internet. Huh. You have to reboot your Kindle or something. Uh, and there is Bonnie chiming in. 19 feels like 14 in Irma. Yeah. Um, and the snow's lighting up here as I look out the window. Ashley, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, we'll include her in our in our prayers today. Connie and Robin, good morning to you guys. 15 and blustery up there in Harsha. Maybe I'm glad I'm not in Harsha today. I'll have to see what the weather's like tomorrow up there. Um, all right, that's that's who's who's greeted us today. Good morning to the rest of you who might be lurking in the background or those who watch later today, whether it's here or on uh, YouTube this afternoon or this evening. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. What, whatever it requires, greetings. I'm glad you're here taking a little time to be in God's Word on this on this uh, Wednesday, November 30th. So let's go ahead and get started. If you have a Lutheran service book, LSB, page 295, Daily Prayer for uh, Individuals and Families, the morning order as we begin the liturgy portion this morning. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now, I'm going to take just a second here because my, my, uh, my day has been a little bit goofy today. I... I uh, Got up and I went, um, got up while the Bonnie was getting Zan ready and I 
I uh, went back and slid into the bed, and the dog curled up with me, and I got uh, a few more minutes of sleep, actually almost almost 45 minutes, and uh, so what, that always sets my day off a little bit, and I forget to do things, and I had forgotten to put the uh, the readings and stuff on the screen here. So there we go, our psalm today, Psalm 123, Psalm 123. Um, in its entirety, not a long psalm, not a long psalm. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maidservant to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, till he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. For we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has more, has had more than enough of scorn of those who are at ease of the contempt of the proud. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Thank you, Ashley. I'll add that. I just jotted it down here so I don't forget. Um... The Lord is enthroned in the heavens. It always amazes me that the, the Psalms uh, have this foretelling. Um, I mean, God's always in the heavens, right? Um, but we see in the scriptures and, and in this season that the Lord comes to us in our flesh here on earth and he dwells amongst us. And it's, it, it is very much the, it is truly the very son of God, but it's also the whole wholeness of God, right? In him did the full Godhead dwell. Um, and so God is enthroned in heaven, but he also was on earth amongst us for a time. Um, but then after the crucifixion and resurrection, he ascends back into heaven and, and there uh, takes his uh, full righteous reign, uh, the God-man Christ, uh, the Son of God, Son of Man. Um, and so even even after that, still our eyes look up to our God who is enthroned in heaven. Um, and and the, the psalmist, the, this is, the psalmist is connecting the lives of people um, to our life of faith. Look, behold, look. As the eye of the servant looks to the hand of the master or the eyes of the maidservant uh, to the hand of her mistress, right? Where do, where do good, in, in, in this earthly relationship of servant to master or maidservant to mistress, where do good things come from? They come from the, the hand of their master. They come from the one, hand of the one who has authority over them. And so as, uh, there, as those eyes, our eyes look to those kinds of people, so also our eyes look to the Lord our God from whose hand, uh, all good things come. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Uh, so we, our eyes look up to the Lord our God until he has mercy upon us. This is his mercy, Christ. This is the, his mercy in flesh. Uh, our, our soul has had more than enough contempt. Right? We, the contempt of the wicked, the contempt of those who are turned uh, 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 against us. Uh, those who think that uh, they they are better than us by who they are in this world um, and who are contemptuous, even in this day, who are contemptuous of, of us for having believed in Christ Jesus, uh, that, that a, a man could be God, fully God, die and be raised and by that uh, save us, right? Um, and, then, and then we seek to do what is pleasing to him and people say, oh, you read that, that Bible, that dusty old book? Our soul has a mo more than enough. More than enough of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. So, Lord, have mercy on us. Demonstrate your authority over, over man and all things, which he has done already in Christ and continues to do by the faithful preaching and teaching of his word. Boy, I didn't think there was very much there, but I sure got a lot out of that. <laughs> let's uh, let's go on here to our reading. We're in the book of Isaiah again. We're starting in chapter 6 today. 
uh, and, and we're going partway into chapter 7. That's the downside of reading the Old Testament texts is some of them get quite lengthy. Now, uh, the last two days, most of this has been uh, poetry. Um, but here, uh, there's a fair amount of prose as well, or that, that normal paragraph style, you know, uh, indentation, paragraph, end of paragraph, indentation, paragraph, right? Not, not just uh, passage, passage, passage. So um, let's see what we've got here. Uh, Isaiah chapter 6, beginning at the first verse, and we're going to go into 7 to the ninth verse. So, oh, this is the, that's right, this is the call of Isaiah. Um, I'm working on the sermon for, or as I've worked on the sermon for this, this evening, uh, one of the things I'm looking at is the difference between a vocation and an office. Vocation is, is the tasks that you come, and most of those just come through the natural progression of our life. But an office is something to which you are called and then installed in. And, and to be prophet, Isaiah has to be called and installed, uh, ordained, if you will. So Isaiah 6, chapter 6, verse 1. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I send me. And he said, go and say this, say to this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste. And the Lord removes people far away and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. In the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Rezin, the king of Syria, or Rezin or Rezin, and Pekah, or Pekah, the son of Remaliah, the king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to wage war against it, but could not yet mount an attack against it. When the house of David was told, Syria is in league with Ephraim, the heart of Ahaz and the heart of his people shook as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. And the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out to meet Ahaz. You and Shir Yashub, your son. At the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the washer's field, and say to him, Be careful, be quiet, do not fear, and do not let your heart be faint, 
because of these two smoldering stumps of firebrands at the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria and the son of Remaliah. Because Syria, with Ephraim and the son of Remaliah, has devised evil against you, saying, Let us go up against Judah and terrify it, and let us conquer it for ourselves, and set up the son of Tabeel as king in the midst of it. Thus says the Lord God, It shall not stand, and it shall not come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. And within sixty-five years Ephraim will be shattered from being a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is the son of Remaliah. If you are not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Boy, that ending's kind of rough. What are we doing tomorrow? Ah, yes. Yes, tomorrow. But today. Um, it's important. It's important for us as a human people, as, as human beings living in a world where we're Time flows linearly for us, and we can mark the passage of time in, in, uh, in, in, in seconds and minutes and hours and days and weeks and years and months and or months and years and, and ages and eons. Uh, it's important that God includes in his word time markers. Really? Is it? Yes, it is. And so it is that Isaiah, who as a person in a place, bears little significance. But by giving us this, these time markers, we know when these things took place. That's the reason that in the Apostles' Creed we say, crucified under Pontius Pilate. We can, we can look in the history of our world and see that time know when it was. Um, in in uh, Matthew's Gospel? Boy, Pastor, you need to nail these things down again. Uh, we are told that um, the census comes in the time of a specific king, uh, and that uh, that is important because we can look in history and see when these things took place. And so Isaiah says, in the year that King Uzziah died, and it gives us a point uh, in the timeline, in the line of human history that we can point to and say, here is when Isaiah began to speak. Uh, here is when, when Isaiah was called by God. And so he had this vision uh, of the throne room of God. And, and this is not something that can be seen or comprehended by human reason. Um, just as John's revelation, St. John's revelation, um, is filled with imagery, uh, so is this, because our minds are not able to fully comprehend the throne room of God. But we're given this image, the Lord sitting on a, on a throne, the train of his, of his robe filled the temple. And above him are the seraphim, uh, six-winged angels, you know, and these aren't cute little cherubims that you buy in the Christian bookstore that look nice on your shelf and, and are pretty and cute. These are terrifying creatures with, with six swings. Um, and yet, uh, in, in honor of God, with two of their wings, they cover their face. Um, and because they are in a holy place with two of their wings, they cover their feet. Just as Moses was told to remove his shoes when he stood near the bush for the ground on which he stood was hallowed. Uh, and then with two, they, they maintain their flight. And then they call. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord a God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, uh, so, oh, hey, Michael, good morning to you. Uh, th there are some who say that you don't see the Trinity in the Old Testament, right? Now, all you got to do is look at the creation narrative and you can see, um, you can see the Trinity and in, in many places. But here's one. When these angels cry, 
when they call to one another, Holy is the Father, holy is the Son, holy is the Spirit, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And then, and then God speaks. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at his voice. That's power. And the house is filled with smoke. That is to say, for, for the Israelites, smoke is the smoke of incense is prayers. Woe is me, says Isaiah. I am lost. Isaiah knows that you cannot stand before God. God will not allow sin in his presence, and he knows what he is. He's crying for God's mercy. Woe is me, for I am lost. I'm a man of unclean lips, dwelling in the midst of a people of unclean lips, and I have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I've seen God with my eyes, and for this I will die. Uh, the parents of Solomon, the father of, so of, of, not Solomon, Samson, the judge, Samson, has the same response. Um, when, when the angel of the Lord appears to him and his wife uh, to tell them about the child who will be born, Samson. Um, I can't think of his name now. It starts with an M. But he falls to his knees and says, we're dead. We're dead. This is it. We're done. <laughs> Um, and his wife was very practical and said, look, if the angel of the Lord that was here wanted us dead, we'd have been dead already. Um, but here's what happens. One of the seraphim flies from where he's singing praise to God and brings a coal from the from the brazier in the, in the throne room of God and touches it to the lips of Isaiah. Doesn't burn him. Right? There's nothing in the text here about pain or suffering. It doesn't burn him, but touches his lips and says, your guilt is taken away. Your sin is atoned for. You are forgiven. You are now sinless and blameless before, uh, before the, 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 the Lord of hosts, the God of all. And then God says, who shall I send? And Isaiah says, here am I, send me. God ordains him now to go and do this work. Go say to this people. There's a lot here. And I, and I want to keep going. Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. God darkens the hearts and eyes of men so they cannot see his, his promise. So it, it, so that Because if they, if they did, they would turn and he would forgive them. Um, but Isaiah makes a, makes a plea for them, right? Um, just, just like our, our psalm did. Uh, have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. Uh, Isaiah says, how long? Lord, okay, you're going to do this, and I understand your authority, and I submit to it, and I, and I will go and say these things. I will go say to, to your people, Israel, uh, your, your eyes be blind, your... your uh, perception be dull, your, your heart be not understanding, your ears be, be closed. Um, but how long? How long will we have to endure until the cities lie waste? Until the houses are without people? Until the Lord removes people far away? And that's, that's the Babylonian captivity. I mean, Babylon's far away. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. It ain't a day's walk. Um, but, see, even in God's judgment against his people here is, is a promise hidden in verses, in verse 13. And though a tenth, a remnant remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains when it's felled. The holy seed is in the, its stump, the stump of Jesse. That's the promise of, that's that's the promise of the return. Uh, that's the promise of what we will have in the birth of our Lord Christ. Um, the holy seed is its stump. Where does the idea of the stump of Jesse come from? Well, here, here is one place where it shows up. Um, friends, I, like I say, there's so much here, but understand that. 
God is bringing judgment upon his people Israel. And he's even, in the next passage, offering the opportunity for them to not turn away, but to turn back to him and not be afraid as as Ephraim uh, combines with the northern kingdom, uh, as Syria combines with the northern kingdom, rather, and will come down and assault uh, Judah. God offers to protect them. Um, but here's that last line that we had, right? He's told to go meet with Ahaz. Isaiah is told to go meet with King Ahaz and tell them not to be afraid, not to fear. Um, but he, he, this last phrase, which is going to lead us into tomorrow, if you are not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all, right? Um, in St. John's Revelation, it, he talks about churches that are lukewarm. They are not firm in the faith um, in, in many places. You know, how much faith does one have to have? Well, a, a modicum, a, a morsel, a portion, a small bit. A, a, the faith of a, of a mustard seed, I guess, is what the Lord says, right? And how big is a mustard seed? Will not vary. Um, but if you have none, if you have none, then there will be none. Where does it come from? It comes from him. It's not something that we have of ourselves. It's something that God has given us through the gift of, of his baptism, our baptism, baptism into Christ. And their faith is given, right? I read a, I read a statement. It's been going around on Facebook, I think. Uh, a, man, a man read the, or came up to the pastor and the pastor said to the pastor, you know, uh, pastor, you keep preaching that the burden of sin is so heavy, but I don't feel any weight. I don't, there's no weight on me. Um, when the pastor said to the man, he said, well, uh, let's, let's say you go out to the cemetery out here and you disinter one of the bodies and you lay a 400 pound cement block on top of the body. How much weight does it feel? Well, none. It's dead. And the pastor says, you are right. The burden of sin is heavy upon those who have faith, but it's nothing on those who are spiritually dead. But you and I have been given the waters of baptism combined with the word and the promise of Christ. We've been baptized into Christ Jesus. We've been given faith in him. Even, even if that faith is small and growing, we've been given faith in him by which to cling to his promises and to call upon him and, and, and to say, have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. We look to your hand to provide for us. And you do. And you forgive us. And on the last day, on our last day, when we breathe our last, we will be with you in that throne room, awaiting the day of the resurrection and the promise of, of eternal life in your kingdom, without sin, without suffering, without darkness, and only in the light. Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. That's the promise we have. It is in Christ that we are firm. We are made firm by him. But if we have not Christ, then we have nothing at all. But he's been given, and we have received. Thanks be to God for his mercy. Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Somewhere here. Here we go. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your grace, the apostle Andrew obeyed the call of your son to be a disciple. Grant us also to follow the same Lord Jesus Christ in heart and life, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In our prayers for ourselves and others on this Wednesday morning, Again, uh, the first week of the prayers here follow the order of the Lord's Prayer. This prayer on a, this Wednesday focusing on the petition of give us this day our daily bread. O Father in heaven, you make the sun rise on the evil and on the good and send rain on the just and the unjust. Despite many sins and failures of your chosen Israel, you mercifully provided for them during their whole 40 years of wandering in the wilderness with Moses. And your Son, my Savior, Jesus Christ, not only fed more than 5,000 with bread and fish, but he also taught them the truth that he is the bread of life. With the same loving mercy, you teach us not to worry or be anxious about anything, for even the birds of the air and the grass of the field are tended and nourished by your fatherly hand. In your eyes, I am more valuable than they, so calm my heart and mind, which so often wander into anxiety, doubt, and fear. When I worry about the cares of this life, quiet my troubled soul and redirect me to you, who longs to hear such prayers. Remind me of your love and the providence for all people, even sinners such as me. Help me also to learn the virtue of contentment, recognizing the many great blessings you have given me already, and having a thankful and cheerful heart at all times. As I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with all who suffer in body, mind, or soul. May you strengthen those spirits who call upon your name. May you send messengers like Isaiah to those who have not heard your name, and to remind them and teach them and to give them that promise of your blessing. Be this day with the people of China as the unrest there grows. Be with the people of Hawaii as the volcano begins to erupt. Protect them and their homes. Remind them always that property can be lost, but life is your treasure for us to hold on to. Be with Deanna as she draws near to you, Lord. Grant mercy to her and comfort in her, in her time. Comfort also Ashley and the entire family as they are reminded of what you have done in Christ Jesus for both uh, for for both the, the Deanna and for uh, them and all of us. Be with the others that we pray for daily: Peter, Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Annette, Pam, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them peace by your Holy Spirit, and grant them strength where it is needed. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends. That brings our devotions to a close for November 30th. Eh, a little longer than usual, but, you know, good stuff in Isaiah. As a professor of mine at the seminary once said, I've been told to preach the gospel today in the chapel. I will do so through the Old Testament. God's peace be with you, and we'll see you back here Thursday, tomorrow morning, for our daily devotions. God's peace.